Oh, good evening everyone and welcome again to the Oak Tree Arena where tonight Rerun Productions is proud to bring you the Premier League Grand Final second leg between the Somerset Cases Rebels and the Sheffield Tigers. The Rebels with a narrow 46-44 victory up at Owlerton last night, a keenly contested meeting. The Rebels looking to, uh, to get their first Premier League Grand Final victory since 2013 and as you can see behind me a huge crowd on hand slowly filtering into the uh, stadium and we're hoping for 15 sensational heats of Speedway to determine the Premier League champions of 2016. Well we've got a lot to get through between now and the first heat so let's head over to the pits grab a few words with some of the key figures ahead of tonight's meeting. Well Somerset's Josh Grashinek joins us and Josh last night a very keenly contested first leg are you expecting more of the same this evening? Yeah, I think um, both Sheffield and Somerset are pretty similar tracks. So we uh, we got a bit of a lead there, and at one stage I think we were about eight points up at once, and we sort of let that slip a little bit in the later heats. But you know, to get a win for us, I think that was pretty pretty good as a team because we all rode well, and when we needed it, Charles pulled a win out of the bag, and Starkey pulled a win out of the bag, and it was a good team effort last night. So you know, tonight we're at our home track, but obviously it's not over till uh, the fat lady sings. So. Um, we just got to stay level-headed and keep doing what we've been doing here all year, apart from that one Glasgow meeting when we all we lost a couple of riders and stuff. But, yeah, I think if we just um, play it safe and, you know, concentrate on getting out those starts and riding like we have been all year, I think maybe we'll be all right. But, you know, it's speedway and anything, anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. As you say, I mean, looking ahead, I mean, a, a championship would be a great way to round off a very good season for you personally. Doing well at elite league level, representing your country, of course, at uh, the national stadium. That's got to have gone down as a career highlight for you. Yeah. And this would uh, would really cap off the season perfectly, wouldn't it? Yeah, 100%. You know, a lot of people wrote us off at the start of the year because we had three guys that, that had never ridden at Premier League level before. And um, I think... Even Gazza will say, you know, it was more of a year to f get them boys to find their feet and then maybe hit it next year. And we all seem to hit click at once. And, you know, Jake's done a lot better than a lot of people expected. You know, we sort of thought if he maintains his average, then we'll be happy. And he's done a lot more than that for, for a team, for the whole team. And, um, yeah, he's, he's an exciting rider to watch. He, he never gives up and he's had some awesome races around here this year. And the same goes with Brad and Zach as well. Zach was starting to find his feet and then got injured at Stoke. And, you know, Brad had that crash with uh, Garcia here and that sort of stuffed him up a bit. You know, and he, he, was, he was more devastated than all of us to not be in the final and stuff like that. So, yeah, on all, in, all in all, we've had a good year with Somerset and we finished top of the league in, in, as the league finished. But, like, this is a fresh start and Sheffield have shown what they can do by coming, finishing sixth and coming through the semis, the quarterfinals and the semifinals to make it to the finals. So, uh, it's not going to be easy tonight. They've got two good guests that, that ride this track pretty well and... Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be tough. And I guess for them, all the pressure's off. Um, most people, you know, looking at it objectively, would say that Somerset are by far the favourites, but you can't afford to take your feet off the gas at all tonight. Firstly, Gary May won't let you. And okay. secondly, we, we've seen that, that in the times when Somerset do take the feet off the gas round here, other teams can really capitalise on that, and it takes an immense effort from you guys to come back again, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. We've At, at the beginning of the year, and probably we had a little bit of a dip maybe two months ago we sort of were struggling a little bit at the start and then they'd be close all the way through and we'd get to about the last three or four heats and then we'd sort of get a few five ones and manage to just scrape a 10 point or a 12 point win or whatnot so it's um it's it's a, it's a meeting that we've got to we've got to sort of be on it from the start and it's not going to be easy we we know what these boys are capable of we raced against them last night and I think we had 11 days off and that wasn't the best thing for us but at the end of the day we we done all the meetings that we could so we just had to sit and wait so uh guys will be having some stern words with us in a minute and uh telling us to keep it going and make sure we don't drop our heads or anything like that and yeah just work as a team like we have been all season yeah i mean some of the results around here don't really tell the full story we've been treated to some fantastic racing all year can we expect much of the same again tonight do you feel yeah, I, I actually feel it's going to be a good meeting tonight. You know, we've had Batesy here guesting for us a few times and Kyle knows this place and I live with Kyle and I know he's up for it tonight. And yeah, Robbo is not one to oh, not one to back off when, he, when there's a good dirt line here. So it's going to be tough and yeah, obviously I think it's going to be good. You know, some meetings we've, we've won by a big margin, but the racing's been unreal and mm. I think that that's, goes to show what a good racetrack this is. You can come from behind and away riders can come from behind and 
yeah, hopefully it's a good one for everyone to watch. Well, we'll keep the champagne on ice just for now, <laughs> but we wish you the very best of luck for this evening. Thanks for talking to us and have a safe one. Thanks very much. All right. Cheers, Cheers mate. Cheers. Sheffield team manager Mark Bates joins us. Mark, a narrow 44-46 defeat last night, but it wasn't for the want of trying, was it? The riders gave it everything. Yeah, they tried the hardest. Listen, we're under no illusions. Somerset's been best team all year. Um, we give it as best last night. We had a couple of mechanicals, um, two brand new primary chains on Kyle and Josh's bike snapped, which is just bad luck. Otherwise, maybe we'd have had a two-point lead, I don't know. They'll give it their all again tonight and we'll just do the best we can. If it's good enough, it is. If it's not, it's not. But to be fair, we're happy just to be at final with the season we've had. I was going to say, nobody would have expected this even a few weeks ago, let, a few, let alone a few months ago. How proud are you of the efforts that the team has put in, given everything that's been stacked against you? It's, it's, to be honest with you, every writ is off. They didn't think we were going to get playoffs. I always had belief that if the team put, got going, we could win meetings wherever we went, and it's proven. We have had some good guests in. But the guests we've had away from home, where we've boosted the score, have been um, really, if we'd have had Simon, Dimitri and Jason at home, would have been uh, a lot better, should I like to say. Um, last night, RR off Simon got us four points, and I got four points off Ricky for Jason. Eight points between them two, I'd have had 20 points off him. So it's been an hard season, again, we injuries. Um, but it's Speedway, so I am proud of the lads. They've all chipped in throughout the year. Kyle has been outstanding start at year to end. And I can't ask any more from the lads for the effort they've put in, especially the last couple of months, where they've had to dig deep, they have done. And they've got us to a final, which I don't think anybody had ever thought would have got to. So. I mean, all the pressure's off your riders tonight. What's your message going to be to them as they set out for the first eight? Just enjoy it. Enjoy the meeting, enjoy the, the night. Do, do the best they can. We went to Glasgow last week and I told them exactly the same at Glasgow, just enjoy the meeting. Um, so we'll do the same here again tonight and if they're right to the ability, all of them, we'll put a good fighting chance up. But listen, at the end of the day, I'm under no illusions. Somerset have been the best team all year. Uh, they're not top league like they have done. They beat everybody home and away. You've got, they're, they're the standard people's got to get to and hopefully next year get less injuries we can get to that level so. well the meetings we usually get with Sheffield here always pretty much top notch um, we hope for more of the same again tonight and whatever happens congratulations on getting to this stage and we wish you a very safe and successful evening thanks for talking right, to thank us thank you cheers right, thank thanks. you well Somerset team manager Gary May joins us now and Gary how pleased were you with the performance last night rather than the result Oh, just great, when you to come here with two points, uh, you know, makes the job a little bit easier, but you never know what happens in Speedway, so we're not taking anything for granted, we just do our normal job, treat it as another meeting, and hopefully at the end we win it. It looked like the points were fairly evenly spread last night, a proper 1-17 to 17 performance, would that be right? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was all good, you know, and, and that's the way it was, yeah. It was all good. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, obviously you'll be starting tonight's meeting as the favourites, but knowing you, you won't be letting the riders rest on their laurels. Um, anyone that doesn't look like they're pulling the way, I guess Gary May's famous right foot's going to come out and give him a good kick up the backside, is that right? That's definitely right, 100% right, because we want this, you know, it's what we've done for all season, we finished on top of the league, you know, and we've gone through these meetings, so this is what we, we want this one tonight, yeah. And if anyone ain't pulling their weight, they come out and get my foot, yeah. We've seen some fantastic meetings here this year, some great results. It's all going to count for nothing without the victory tonight. Um, what do you tell the riders ahead of the first meeting? Is it just to do what they've done the rest of the season? Just treat it as an ordinary meeting tonight, you know, because I don't want to put no pressure on them. We're two points up, you know, they, they go out there and they, they do the business anyway. So we'll be hitting them hard straight away to knock their confidence out and then we'll just take it from there. Well, we wish you the very best of luck tonight, Gary. Thanks for talking to us and all the best. Thank you very much. Thanks. And here we go. The Grand Parade ahead of the first heat of tonight's grand final second leg between the Somerset Cases Rebels and the Sheffield Tigers. And Stuart Rump said it's easier riding with the Rebels and against them. So let's hope that's the same tonight. And number four is uh, 
And the well known driver to you all who performed very well up at Glasgow recently is Josh Bates. And in the ball for Sheffield is their skipper, Kyle Haller. And in the sixth, Australian in his second season at Sheffield, Arthur Seasick. Oh, I was happy for you, Josh. And in the second, Sheffield Bull and Drag, Nathan Greaves. Jordan, man. Over to the Rubble side, that's Mother of the Night. What a pleasure he's been here to the end of this season. Rubble Pungate. Partner of him in three of the races is Jake Allen. And number three, the fence scraping Charles Wright. And number four, the equally exciting Paul Stark. And there we go, both sets of riders presented to the crowd ahead of what promises to be a sensational evening speedway. Well, thanks, Tony, and for setting the scene here this evening as we start the uh, Premier League Grand Final second leg. A great result for Somerset last night, where they won by 46 points to 44 at uh, Elderton. And uh, it all comes down to these next 15 heats to decide the uh, Premier League champions for 2016. Somerset took what well, they won it in 2013. Twice they've only missed out by a point in 2012 against Scunthorpe in a heartbreaker as it was in 2015, oh sorry, 2014 against Edinburgh, who they had won beaten in 2013. Missed out last year at the semi-final stage, but to say they're through to the grand final for the fourth time in the five stages of the playoffs in the Premier League. A magnificent record, will there be more silverware for? Debbie Hancock and Gary May, heat number one is about to get underway. Rowan Tungate, Jake Cannon, Ricky Wells, Arthur Sissis, the race is underway. And into that first bend and it is uh, Ricky Wells who's made the best start. He leads it from in second place. It is uh, Arthur Sissis, although here comes Tungate round the outside. Jake Allen, who had a bit of a nightmare meeting last night at Ellison, he only got three points. He's at the back in uh, the opener. This is good news for Sheffield as uh, Ricky Wells it is who uh, leads the way. There's plenty of uh, Sheffield fans in the uh, stadium here tonight, the Oak Tree Arena, with uh, Ricky Wells leading the way, they will be delighted with this start, Rowan Tungate in second place, this is doing very well in third, one of the reasons that uh, Sheffield made it through to the uh, grand final, had a magnificent meeting at uh, Glasgow where he got to uh, eight, eight, 15 or 16, a tremendous performance by the Australian, he's doing pretty well here, here in the opener, Keeping uh, Jake Allen at the back, Ricky Wells it is, who uh, wins race number one. Second spot goes to uh, Rowan Tungate, who had to fight his way around the outside of Sissis. Arthur Holt held on for third place, but it is a 4-2-4. Four, the visitors in the opener, and uh, they uh, draw level at 48 points apiece on aggregate. The uh, Sheffield fans were there, they are down the back straight. They would be delighted with the start. Ricky Wells, who only got paid six uh, last night, guessing uh, for the uh, Star Tigers. Or the Sheffield Window Centre Tigers. Sorry, Star Tigers was a few years ago, of course. But uh, uh, that's a great start for Ricky Wells in heat. Number one, Stuart Robson, the other guest, just coming out to congratulate him. So here we go then, heat number two, the reserves race, and uh, Robert Bramford, we've got him coming out of gate number one, one of two guests for Somerset here this evening. So it's, it's a, it certainly is a shame that uh, the riders have not been able to complete the season with their respective teams. Of course, no Bradley Wilson-Dean or Zach Voigtneck, although both are here this evening at the Oak Tree Arena, and uh, no uh, Simon Stead, uh, Jason Garrity or Dimitri Berger for Sheffield. And so heat number two, we're about ready to go. Robert Bradford off one, then Arthur Sissi off two. Jake Shane's off three, Nathan Creech on the outside. All oh, bit of movement there out of the start by Arthur. And uh, the uh, red light's been put on immediately. Dave Waters, well, we remiss of us. We uh, didn't say that he's the uh, referee here this evening. He puts a stop to uh, heat number two. Arthur, no doubt, will get a warning for moving at the start of that one. And uh, well, he's just been warned to... Uh, 
remain stationary at the start and it'll be a rerun of heat two the riders are back out on track then for the restart of this one Rob Bramford will he won the corresponding race heat number two last night resulting in a 4-2 for Somerset heat number two second time around and uh, Bradford will he's made a good start from the inside he leaves it Sissis is in second place Nathan Greaves is in third Shane is at the back it is a uh, three all at the moment although Shane will he's uh, chasing down Nathan Greaves out in front meanwhile it is Bradford who leads the way scored at page five in that match last night at uh, Alderton James Shane's his reserve partner for the evening, he scored page four. Arthur Sissis will need to bid the best out of these quartet of reserves. He scored page seven with Nathan Grease scoring uh, just three. It is a uh, shared heat in race number two then. As uh, Bramford looks as if he's going to continue with the victory here in heat number two. He's got one last evening, he's out in front. Sissis in second place, Grease is holding on to that third. Ahead of uh, James Shane's at the moment as they go down the back straight to it's Bramford who's going to take the win. Here comes uh, James in fact up the inside of Nathan Greaves and as they cross the line. Oh my goodness, well Greaves, uh, oh sorry, James got to up put right on the line to uh, claim second place of Nathan Greaves. And uh, well, the Somerset fans are obviously applauding uh, Rob and uh, James for that. Uh, and uh, Greaves just got caught napping on the run to the line. He's been passed by whoa, half a bite, half a wheel length there. Bramford, Sissish, Shane Greaves. That's the uh, finishing order of uh, heat number two. And the fans in the uh, home straight obviously delighted with that. Race number three. Next one up, we have got uh, Stuart Robson coming out off of gate number one. He top scored, or joint top scorer last night with Rob Oak with page 13 alongside Carl Howard. Stuart Robson, veteran at stage of his career now, but uh, full value rider. He comes out of gate number one, then gate number two sees Paul Stark. He got a solid seven points last night. Josh Bates off gate number three. He, uh, does it, he helped uh, Somerset, of course, to make it through to these end of season playoffs uh, with a uh, terrific performance uh, against uh, Ipswich. He's off gate number three. And uh, from the outside, it is uh, Charles Wright uh, as the crowd uh, look on in the main. Uh, well, not a stand is there but the main area by the referees box so heat number three Somerset to, to 52 50 in front on Agrid the race gets underway and into that first bend where well, it's a fine start there by the rider in white that is Stuart Robson he leads away here comes the, oh that Charles Ryan Paul start they got very close to each other then I think right he was trying to come around the outside of Paul but he got pulled a bit by his own teammate Josh Bates missed out at the start and he's in last position but Robson it is who leads the way that was a tremendous start by Stewart and uh, he's out in front not known as a great gator is the uh, Newcastle rider for this season but he certainly made a terrific gate there from uh, the inside and he uh, looks if he's going to uh, take a good victory here Paul Stark giving chase in second place we saw what James James did in heat number two can Stark possibly catch up Robbo on the final lap Wright is in third Josh Bates that's a bit of a surprise he's tailed off at the back as they come in it doesn't look as if uh, Stewart is going to be called he's going to uh, become the second uh, general race winner in the opening three heats he uh, takes the victory second place goes to Paul Stark uh, Charles Wright in third right well he was attempting to move around the outside of uh, Starkey on the opening lap but it got bulked there by his own teammate the Sheffield fans in the uh, crowd uh, obviously delighted with uh, Stewart's uh, contribution there in heat number three nine points apiece on the night after three races Somerset they still hold on to that very slender two point lead 55 to 53 Robbo the race victor next one up we got to heat number four Nathan Greaves comes out of gate number one didn't score in his first ride caught by James Shanes of course who comes out off of uh, gate number two Carl Howard he's been most impressive uh, for Sheffield and Wolverhampton this year of course he's uh, already a champion in the elite league part of the Wolverhampton side that won the uh, title this year he comes out top of uh, gate number three and uh, from the outside it is Josh Petronic no longer riding at number one of course having the overtaken in the averages by Rowan Tungate a fantastic season by Rowan averaging over nine points per match 
Josh uh, 8.9 Hence he's uh, not uh, riding uh, in heat number one here this evening Josh we did not score last night with 12 points Rowan is a point behind on 11 Heat number four gets underway Gratronic has made a good start from the outside How has uh, got through the second place James is in front of Greaves this time And uh, Nathan is at the back but Josh Petronic it is who leads the way from uh, in second place it is Carl Howard third spot James Shane's Nathan Greaves at the back uh, great start there by the Australian off gate number four we've uh, not had a race winner from the outside gate position so far this evening but it looks like it's going to happen here in uh, heat number four because it is Petronic uh, who leads from uh, Shane or from uh, Howard in second place a bit <laughs> Lane freeze there. Carl Howard in second. James Shane is in third. And Nathan Greaves. It looks like he's, uh, in fact, he's retired at the back in this one. So it is going to be another heat advantage for Somerset. Their second of the evening as uh, the captain crosses the line in front. Our second place. Third spot goes to Shane. It is a 4 2 for the home side then. As uh, Somerset will they move 13 points to 11 in front on the night and by 59 points to 40 to 55 on aggregate so uh, Sheffield we well, can be sure they're going to make uh, Somerset fight every inch for this uh, second uh, Premier League title in uh, the last uh, four seasons uh, if they are able to do so Somerset, uh, Somerset uh, say they are desperate to win but Sheffield they're doing well early on or Ogratronic getting the win in that one he's going back into the pits Robert Bramford joins us after four heats, Robert, it's on as even. How do you think it's going to pan out the rest of the night? Oh, obviously we're all here to win, mate. We're all going out there to do the best we can. Um, Speedway, you can't ever tell what's going to happen. You don't, I wouldn't like to predict it, but um, yeah, I guess we'll all get stuck in and like just keep getting heat advantage. That's what we need, isn't it? Yeah, win for you in your first race, obviously. You'll be hoping to progress the rest of the evening in the same vein. What, what's the rest of it? Is, it? is it giving moral support to the rest of the riders or...? Do you all know what your jobs are and it's just a case of going out and giving it your best tonight, I guess? Oh, we're all going to get stuck in. Like, I mean, obviously I, I'm guesting here, so, um, yeah, I'm guesting here tonight, so it's not my team, is it? But, you know, I, I'm grateful that they have the trust in me to put me in this position in a final and i just got to prove them right and do a job for them. So uh, I'm probably, like, yeah, definitely the, like, least experienced in the team. So um, I'm behind Shanesy, obviously. So, uh, yeah, just keep going, mate. And um, their boys are pretty good and they, they got the setup around here. So I'll keep listening to them for sure. Yeah. One of the two of the races a little bit more strung out than perhaps we're used to here. What's the track riding like so far? That's uh, pretty good, mate. I mean, obviously, I don't ride here every week, but last time I come here, it was pretty wet to start with. But um, but it is a little bit greasy out there. I guess it's pretty cold now, so the moisture's coming up. But I think generally the track's pretty good. It's always a good race track here, and I think it should be some pretty exciting racing, really. We'll let you get on with your job. Thanks for talking to us. Cheers, Cheers. boys. Cheers. Thanks. Well, good to hear there from uh, Rob Bramford and uh, our man Tony. Just go get those scores slightly wrong, of course. I think he's. Just, uh, he's had a bit of a brain freeze, I think. He uh, thinks that uh, it was a draw last night. Oh, sorry, it was a two-point win for Sheffield last night. Of course, it was a two-point victory for Somerset, so it's not all square on aggregate. The uh, Casey's Rebels do lead by four points, 59 points to 55 on aggregate. We get ready for heat number five then. The lineup we've got Charles Wright off gate number one. Josh Bates comes out off gate number two, taking a ride replacement out in for the injured uh, Frenchman Dimitri Berger. Gate number three, that sees Paul Stark got a second place in his first out in. Chased home Stuart Robson and from the outside Ricky Wells, who looked very impressive in uh, his first race when he beat uh, Somerset number one, Rowan Tungate. Heat number five then, we are ready to go and in fact, uh, well, Josh Bates was a little bit too ready to go there, wasn't he? He's gone straight through the tapes and um, there's no need to look at a replay of that. He will be disqualified. His uncle Damien Bates has got a decision to make. What will it be? And, uh, well, in actual fact, he's not put uh, Josh off of 15 metres. He's brought Arthur Sissis out. So, Josh, a little bit too keen now. The uh, two times uh, what British uh, under-21 champion. As uh, we get ready then for this one. And uh, we have got uh, Arthur Sissis coming out to replace Josh Bates. Uh, 
in this uh, restart to rerun of uh, heat number five. So it is uh, right off a of one, Sish is now off a of two, Stark off a of three, Wells nearest the camera, heat number five is underway into the bend number one and it is right he has made a good start he leads the way Ricky Wells though is attempting to get around the outside of the Englishman and the American but he has found a way through into first place it is Wells who leads the way he's looking quick here here comes Sissis up the inside of Stark good action in heat number five Stark tries to get back around the outside of Arthur it's close between those two riders as they go down the back straight into that third turn it is still Ricky Wells who leads the way then from in second place it is uh, Charles Wright, Paul Stark has now got the better of Sissis and he's moved through into uh, third place. Good action in this one. And the net result is that it's a shared race as uh, Wells is leading his second race in a row. He's, he's certainly not going to be caught in this one. He's looking quick, isn't he? He's held in front from uh, Charles Wright in second place. Paul Stark has now got the better of Sissis in third. Well, it's good a battle between them for the first couple of laps as Ricky Wells wins it then from Wright Stark and Sissis, it uh, means that it's a shared heat in race number five, our second of the meeting. As uh, Paul Stark, will have to fight very hard to uh, find a way past the uh, Sheffield uh, number six, but he got the better of him eventually. Still Sheffield very much in this uh, Premier League grand final. It uh, results in a shared race, 16-14 on the night. Somerset still just those four points in front, 62-58 on aggregate. Race number six, next one up, Cole Howarth comes out off of gate number one. Second place in his first ride behind Quatronic. Rowan Tungate, the other half of the Premier League pairs, that champions of course, alongside Josh, he comes out off of gate number two. Nathan Greaves, he uh, comes out of gate number three, it's a reserve switch uh, by... Damien Bates uh, to uh, give uh, Arthur a little bit uh, extra time. So Greaves comes out off of gate number three, hasn't scored a point in his first uh, two rides as Nathan, which will be disappointing to him, and Damien, no doubt, and Jay Callard when he comes out off of uh, gate number four. Jay really also, he didn't score in his first race, so hoping to uh, make the men to that. He's had a terrific year this year as Jake came in uh, at the beginning of March and uh, well, he really has uh, been one of the main reasons that Somerset have made it through to yet another grand final where he, number six gets underway and it is Tungate who's made the best start Cole Howarth is in second place Jay Callan trying to get through on the inside as Howarth but he's attempting to find a way past Tungate on the outside as they complete the opening lap and uh, or come out to beat Jay Callan moves through the first place but Howarth comes back at it on the inside cracking action in heat number six, Nathan Greaves, but he's getting a terrific view of it all, as are you, as you can see there, as uh, Jake Callum, well, he's doing all he can to pressurise Cole Howarth, but Howarth is standing firm, he's in second place, it doesn't look like there's going to be any catching Rowan Tungate though, he's uh, heading towards what will be his first win of the meeting, as they uh, come out complete lap number three, Tungate out in front from uh, Howard in second place, Jake Hallen, well he's going to score his first point of the meeting, it looks like in this one, heat number six, it's going to be another 4-2, four, 4 four, Somerset there, third of the meeting, Rowan wins it, second place goes to Cole Howard, first spot to Jake Hallen, some good action between the two riders in second and third there, and it does result in a 4-2 for four, Somerset, and uh, well, on the night it's 2016 on aggregate now 66 60. Heat number seven, the race is coming fast and furious here at the Oak Tree Arena. We hope you enjoy what we're bringing you this evening. Heat number seven, Josh Gatronic comes out off of gate number one. Stuart Robson comes out off of gate number two. Gate number three, that sees uh, Rob Bramford. And uh, from the outside it's Josh Bates who hasn't scored from his first two rides. Going through the tapes, of course, a couple of heats ago. Krachonic, well, he got a win in his first outing, as did Stuart Robson, as did Rob Bramford. So three unbeaten riders in uh, this uh, heat. Race number seven. Racket atmosphere here at the Oak Tree Arena. 
quite a balmy night for the end of October as Heat 7 gets underway and it's Katronic from the inside who's made it pay that inside gate. He leads the way from his second place. Robson, Josh Bates is in a scoring position for the first or is it well he was in a score he's in a score position for the first time. He's back in third place uh, and uh, at the back it is uh, Rob Bramford, it's a head heat again then, as Gretronic showing his class here in uh, race seven. He leads the way, really has been a, a very, very consistent scorer for Somerset once again this year. The uh, Oak Faces Rebels captain, he leads the way, he's got a big, big lead over Robson in uh, second place. Uh, Josh Bates is uh, going to get his first points here, back in third. Rob Bramford in last position, the riders strung out in this one. Heat number seven, but it's going to be a couple enough victory for Josh. He comes round and takes the victory. Second place goes to Robson, third spot to Bates, with Bramford failing to score in his second outing. It results in a shared heat, our third one of those this evening. Yet to have a 5 1 for either side, and after seven races, Somerset are on 23 on the night, Sheffield are on 19, on aggregate it's 69-63, still, uh, well it's uh, not really a comfortable margin at the moment for the Case and Rebels on aggregate, it's only six points, with uh, eight races remaining. Next up, it is uh, heat number eight, James Shane's come out of gate number one, he's got scored a couple of third places so far, rides the tentacles, in the National League there, Max is all finished now, so James is more than happy to help the Somerset out in their last uh, few fixtures. He's off gate number one. Gate number two, there's no uh, there's no uh, Nathan Greaves that uh, Arthur Sissis has come out to uh, take his place. Gate number three is Jake Hallen, just a point for Jake in his first two races. He will not be happy at all with that, he'll be hoping to uh, take a victory in this one. And gate number four is Carl Harris has taken a ride replacement out here. Some of the patients there looking on at Kramer Corner, of course that's a spot named after the late great Emil Kramer who was such a star here for Somerset and he's no longer with us. Heat number eight, we're ready to go, green lights on, Dave Waters released the tape and it looks like the rider in white, that is Cole Hatt has released his cuts the fastest, he leads away, Sissies is with him as well. This is the Sheffield 5-1 in heat number 8, this is good for them, Jake Allen is only back in third, James Shane is at the back, here comes Allen on the inside of City, she sends him out wide, it's turned a 5-1 into a 4-2 for Sheffield, it's still a heat advantage for them, they had one in heat number 1, a heat advantage and they're heading towards another one possibly here in heat number 8, as uh, James Shane for now, he's challenging City, out in front though, it is uh, Cole Howard who leads the way, this will be his first victory of the night, he's out in front, Jake Allen looking behind to see what's going on, Arthur Sissons is not that far behind as you can see, as they, oh in fact uh, that's very tight there, as they uh, start the final lap it is Jake Allen who's uh, looking behind him for Sissons and he's uh, just got enough speed at the moment to keep uh, him behind him, changes at the back, it is going to be a shared heat in, uh, oh sorry a 4-2 for Sheffield in heat number 8, and uh, well that's close the gap to four points it could have been just a couple but Jake Allen was able to get past Arthur on the inside on the end of the first lap but the Sheffield fans will they be happy enough but they are given a very good account of themselves only trailed by a couple of points on the night four on aggregate Carl Harris back in the pits so's our Tony Well, the Somerset Riders in a conflab. James Shane's in the midst of a uh, bit of controversy there after that last heat, involving himself and Arthur Sissis on the home straight. Pulled a manoeuvre which, uh, which the Sheffield rider and the rest of the Sheffield riders very unhappy with. Well, Ricky Wells leading the Sheffield team from the front and so far getting great support from the rest of your teammates. Yeah, you know, it's a tough place to come. Um, there was a bit of dirt on the track. Um, the way the tractors are going around every four heats, you know, if you laugh, so I think the, uh, they're trying to slick them off a bit for the homeboys, like they always do. But, uh, you know, good start. Um, we just need to keep going and, and keep it close. I think the aggregate scorers, we're down by four at the moment. So if we can keep going, uh, get it on, and, you know, it's a big push. Uh, heats 13 and 15 are always the big ones, and, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do. Are you riding without any pressure tonight? 
Um, the majority of people will obviously think that after the first heat that, uh, that Somerset were going to be the favourites for this meeting, but uh, does that give you a different mindset going into it? Are you able to ride a bit more freely? Oh, it's a bit funny. Uh, you know, I did the first leg against Newcastle for Sheffield and you know, Newcastle ran us pretty close at home and nobody gave us a shot and we went to Newcastle and, and got through to the next round. Uh, same with Glasgow again. Uh, you know, I don't know what it is with Sheffield, if it's luck or, you know, they just everyone c turns up on the right day. But, you know, I, I came here and uh, believed that Sheffield can win after uh, they haven't proved me, they, they've proved me wrong every time so far. So, you know, um, I'm here to do a job, so I want to go out there and do it. There's a lot of riders that, in your team that go well around here. So far, how have you found the track? Is it riding well? It's nice. It's always a nice place to come to. Uh, wonderful track, easy to ride, uh, hard to go fast on. I would say, but you know, if you do get a setup right and you can make some starts, it's uh, it's a pretty cool track to ride. But you know, once it goes slick, it, it does get real tricky. And Josh and uh, Rowan are they're quick on the slick, so we'll see what we can do. Well, we'll let you get back to work. Thanks for Thank talking you. to us. Thank Thanks. you. Good there from Ricky Wales, who started off superbly. Where with two wins out of two, back to track action. Then heat number nine. 25-23 on the night, 71-67 to uh, Somerset on Ambulant. The riders out on track, Tr it is uh, Paul Stark off gate number one. Gate number two sees Cole House, won his last ride of course, heat number eight. Gate number three, that sees Charles Wright to pay four for right heat from the outside. Nathan Greaves takes the place of Arthur Cities. Heat number nine, this is the second leg of the Premier League Grand Final. It's underway, and so is Howard. He's got his trapping hat on that now. He leads the way from in second place. It is Charles Wright. Paul Stark in third. Stark here, right there, very close to Howard. And here comes Wright on the inside of Howard. And he's got through in the first place. A stunning move there by Charles to lead the way from Howard in second place. With uh, Paul Stark in third, Greaves will he's at the back again as he has been in both of his, uh, uh, or in all three of his uh, other three races, his other races, as uh, Charles Wright it is, who uh, leads the way. This could be Charles' first win of the meeting. Paul Stark will he's putting out, out under a lot of pressure for second place. It's a 4 2 for Somerset at the moment. Stark is trying to make it into a 5 1 there on the final lap. Right is away and gone. Howard holding on to that second place at the moment, but Paul Stark is hovering with the menaces here as they come round. The checker flag is out. Charles Wright's going to take the victory. And second place, when it does go to Cole Howard. Third spot goes to Paul Stark. Some cracking action in that one. Charles Wright, a brave move there on the inside of Howard. Going to get on that opening lap. Got through into first place. An important victory for Charles. He wins it a 4 2 for the home side, and uh, they. Uh, they now move back into a four-point lead on the night, 29 to 25, and six points up overall. Next up, heat number 10, Jake Callan comes out off of gate number one. Got a second place in his last ride, his best ride of the meeting so far. Josh Bates off gate number two, he got his first points in his last ride. After starting with a couple of last uh, places, or zero points, of course, he didn't ride his second heat, haven't touched the tapes or gone through them, he didn't touch them, he demolished them. Gate number three, he's rowing tongue, gate second place and a win from the outside, Stuart Robson, he got a win in the second. Heat number ten, the big race is coming up, out of the start, tongue gate, well, he made the gate there, did he anticipate the start, Dave Waters, will he let it go? There's no red lights on it, is it? It is Tungay who leads them from Jake Allen in second place. The, the uh, Somerset fans, they're roaring on their approval from the stands or from the terraces here. As Tungay leads the way there from uh, Jake Allen in second place. Nathan Greaves and uh, Stuart Robson are battling for just the odd point. This is a massive 5-1 for the Katie's Rebels of Somerset as Tungate leads away, looks over his shoulder delighted to see this Jake Hallen, his teammate behind him Nathan Greaves is still in third Robson bringing up the rear this will be the first uh, maximum heat advantage for either side of it stays like this as they uh, start the final lap then Tungate looks at him, he's going to make it two wins in his last two rides and Jake Hallen, we're well, going to finish with his best race of the meeting it's going to be a paid win it looks like as Nathan Greaves, well, he cannot get to Jake, and it's a big, big 5 one, a huge roar, goes up around the Oak Tree Arena, and uh, they're absolutely delighted with that, a bit of breathing space at least, at last, as uh, Somerset, well, they move six, or they move eight points up on the night, and uh, ten points up on aggregate now, 
80 points to 70, a double digit lead. Overall is the Premier League Grand Final trophy. Coming back to the Oak Tree Arena, those fans most certainly hope to, hope so. And Rowan and Jake, well, they did a terrific job there in heat number 10 to score that massive 5-1. Rowan, uh, did he make a bit of a fly out? Well, he did make a fly, but uh, well, they, what does the referee thought it was uh, absolutely fine? So he is very quick at starting his uh, Rowan. And that was another example of it in heat number 10. Next up, heat number 11. Our Somerset closing on in on another Premier League Championship. Ricky Wells is off gate number one. Josh Katronic off gate number two. Both these riders unbeaten so far. Gate number three is hard to assist. This rider is based there from the outside. Rob Bramford. Oh, and Ricky Wells will exactly look as if he anticipated the start in that one. Yes, indeed. Dave Waters uh, certainly uh, thinking that was an anticipated start by the American. And we're going to be going again with all four. A warning for Ricky. So uh, Wells having been absconded, for moving at the start there. We have got uh, all three or four riders back on track. Two thirds of the way through this second leg of the Grand Premier League Grand Final. So it is uh, Wells off one, Kratonik off two, Sissis off three, Bradford from the outside. And Wells well, he has made a good start, he leads it from in second place, Josh Katronic, but look, Josh has got the run around the outside, he's done that so many times, how many times have we seen him do that here at the Oak Tree Arena, and he now leads heat number 11, second place it is Stuart Robson, with uh, Robbo, he's uh, had a win in the second place, oh sorry, second place it is Ricky Wells of course, Ricky Wells in second place, in third spot it is uh, Rob Bramford with Sissis at the back, as Wells gets a lift there, oh my goodness, and he cannot get that front wheel down, and Bramford, can he get through the inside? Yes, he can. Wells coming back on the outside. What action in heat number 11. Josh Petronic, well, he's missing it all. As Bramford, he's coming through on the inside. He's got up into second place. But Wells now comes back himself on the inside. What action in uh, this race of the uh, Premier League Grand Final second leg. I can't believe that Wells has managed to stay on his bike after lifting it across the start finish line on the second lap. It is a win for Josh Kratronik in his second place for Ricky Wells. How on earth did he manage that? It looked as if he was going to come down, but he got a fantastic riding by the American. Great to balancing skills there to stay on his bike. His top must have been in his mouth. Bramford got through in the second place momentarily, but then Wells came back on the inside as they started the third lap. Great racing in heat number 11. It does result in a 4-2 for the home side, though they move 10 points up on the night, 12 points up on Agri. They can almost taste the champagne. What a race. Heat number 12, next one up. And, uh, well, we've been doing a bit of maths, and uh, well, a 5-1 here would uh, mean that uh, Somerset uh, would be as good as uh, home and hose. They've been 14 points up with three races remaining, but... Uh, They've got to get past the 90 point bar barrier to be absolutely mathematically certain of victory. Here we go, heat number 12. We have got Arthur Sissis' his second race in the row, in a row, taking this program right off gate number one. Charles Wright comes out off gate number two. He uh, won his last race in fine fashion. Stuart Robson off gate number three. He got a last in his previous ride, having started with five points from his first two. And James Shane's off gate number four. He scored two points from three races. Heat number 12, Somerset with that up, you feel almost home and home. Heat 12 gets underway, fast, fast start there from the, the gate number three by Stuart Robson. Dave Waters has let it go. It is Robbo who's held in front then from Charles Wright in second. Sissis is in third ahead of James Shanes. They're having a good battle over the pair of them. And so Shanes on the outside tries to get past the Australian. And it looks like he's managed to do it, although Arthur can't he's it got back through in the third place which is a good action here the same as we do each and every week at the Oak Tree Arena what a fantastic racing circuit it is two laps down two to go Stuart Robson it is who leads the way the Somerset where they're certainly not going to win the trophy in uh, this uh, race it doesn't seem at the moment as Robson leads the way Charles Wright having to settle for second place they start the final lap Arthur Sitting is in third 
Here is uh, Shane's uh, failing to score, it looks like. As Charles Wright will here, he comes on the inside of Stuart Ross and he's put in a big, big challenge. Will Robbo be able to hold him off as they take the trigger pack? Yes, he can, but that was so close. Oh my goodness, that all happened there on the final lap. Some good action in heat, number 12. As uh, Charles Wright, will he battled it very, very hard and almost found a way past Stuart Robson. But Robson, he was able to hold on for the victory. It results in a 4-2 for the visitors then. They close the gap to eight points on the night. Ten points on aggregates. There's still plenty to race for. They go back in the pits. So do we with Tony. Looking cool, calm and collected as always. Nice thumbs up. Thank you, Paul. We'll see if we can grab a quick word with him. Paul, can we get a quick word? Paul, this, uh, this Sheffield side are keeping you honest so far. Ten points in it. I guess your favourites going into these last three heats, but as we all know, anything can happen in this sport and you're going to have to be on your guard still. Yeah, we knew they'd be tough competition, you know, and... Um we, we did a lot of hard work yesterday, you know, to get the win uh, at Sheffield, which is needed, but they're fast around a big track. You know, theirs is very similar to ours, and they're putting up a good fight today. Has Gary May had to say much to the team tonight? I mean, obviously, you know what's at stake. Must win. That's about it. Nah, you know, we all, we all want to win. We know what's at stake. We put the work in through the year to get here, um, and, you know, we, we want that title. So, you know, we're, we're inching closer with the 10 point. Uh, lead so we just keep plugging away and do what we got to do. Just like last night it's been a full team effort from the one to seven. Yeah you know the, the team I mean it's a solid team uh, and we've all worked hard through the year you know some of us have stepped up when we needed to and and, and everyone's working together so uh, yeah solid team probably one of the best teams I've ridden with and thoroughly enjoying it. And a nice way to finish off the season with a championship title. We'll keep our fingers crossed yeah, for hopefully, you. Hopefully, hopefully. Cheers, guys. Thank Thanks you. very much. Cheers. Heat number 13. Will it be great stuff for Somerset because uh, they could win the uh, Premier League Championship in this heat. The uh, lineup: we've got Rowan Tungate off gate number one. Ricky Wells is off gate number two. Josh Kratronik is off gate number three. And Cole Howard is off gate number four. A quality heat number 13. Somerset they lead by 40 points to 32 on the night by 86 to 76 on aggregate and uh, well if they can score a 5-1 uh, in this one it will 4-2 would be good enough but a 5-1 would uh, certainly be the icing on the cake the Somerset fans who uh, come down here each and every week who've been bolstered we've got to say a lot of Sheffield support here this evening great to see that they've travelled down to uh, start uh, to deepest Somerset to, for this uh, fixture and uh, well, kids, of course, they're still on half-term holiday, so there's plenty of youngsters watching the action here this evening. And a lot of them will be able to say, perhaps, that uh, they were there when Somerset uh, were crowned uh, Premier League champions in 2016. They've been one of the most successful seasons in the successful teams in the Premier League for many seasons. Of course, won the Premier League Bears this season. Also won the Premier League Cup against Glasgow two or three weeks ago. So they've got plenty of uh, silverware in there trophy cabinet already, are they going to add the championship, heat number 13, we're about ready to go, Tungate, Quatronic, Wells, Howard, that's the line up, the race gets underway, into that first bend and it's a fantastic start by Cole Howard off gate number four, but here comes uh, Rowan Tungate, he's got through the first place, Tungate leads the way, here comes Howard back on the inside of Tungate, Quatronic missed out on the start, he's at the back, but he's chasing down Ricky Wells and it was a good battle for Second, third and fourth now, but as here comes uh, Josh Kachonik, what a move between the two Sheffield riders. He's got up into second place and that could be a championship winning pass there by Josh Kachonik, the Somerset captain. That was quite exceptional as uh, he's in second place. Rowan Tungate, it is who leads the way and this could be it. This would seal the uh, championship for the Casey's Rebels. As Tungate leads the way, what a move that was by Josh Kachonik. He's in second spot. Ricky Wells has moved her in the third, Cole Hatt is at the back, the Somerset fans, well I think they couldn't believe it now because it's going to be a 5-1 in E number 13 and that's going to be it, the Cases Rebels are the champions of 2016, well done to Somerset, the whole team have been absolutely superb over the whole season, they finished top of the Premier League table of course, 
and they've gone on to win the playoffs as well in fantastic style. What a pass by Joshua Johnny Kid Heat, number 13, coming between Wells and Howard and all the team and Gary May, the fans, and they're all they're all are oh, absolutely delighted and so they should be. The great pairing of Tungate and Grachonic, well they've done it in heat number 13 of 5-1 Somerset, where they now lead by 45 points to 33 on the night, and they have won it because they lead by 14 points on, on aggregate. We are the champions, it's blaring out on the PA system, and uh, Somerset, well they certainly are that, a great, great effort by them, as uh, Josh, uh, we continues round on uh, one wheel, what a stunning move that was by him in uh, heat number 13. Oh, oh well, what a great shot that is. Debbie Hancock and uh, Dad Bill. And uh, well, there's Mum as well. Just uh, all congratulations. A great family run track, of course, here at uh, Somerset. Uh, Belfield at some uh, 15 years ago. And now let's go and join Tony. Uh, and so they've done it. A 5-1 from Josh Grosjeanek and Rowan Tungate seals the Premier League title for the Somerset Casey's Rebels. The first title here at the Oak Tree since 2013 and what sensational scenes. The entire team embracing the management, Gary May, promoter Debbie Hancock, Bill Hancock, the riders, Debbie getting the bumps. From her boys, what fantastic scenes! Let's see if we can grab a quick word with the, with one of the riders. Well, no, we can't just at the minute. Gary May is getting the same treatment. What fantastic scenes! How are you feeling right now? Yeah, it's an, it an awesome ride. It's a bit of pressure, but uh, I just try to stay away from it and uh, keep it calm. And um, yeah, we knew we had to get a four-two. But uh, we end up with a 5-1 and Paul Howarth was, uh, he was going pretty hard and uh, yeah, Josh, he, he came through with a good, so that's awesome and um, it's such a relief now that yeah, we've done the job and we've worked pretty hard for it and just thanks to everyone that's helped us during the year. And how hard have you had to work for that tonight? 28 heats of Speedway, the Sheffield team kept you honest all the way, yeah, you've sealed the deal in heat 13, what a way to do it. Yeah, like I said in the pre-race interview I said that Sheffield and Somerset are pretty similar and you know it was always going to be tough against those boys tonight and yeah I had to work pretty hard in that last race there and I uh, managed to just find a gap I don't know how I found it but yeah got through and come through for 5-1 pretty happy and this magnificent Somerset setup that keeps delivering these championships and these titles and these trophies how do you guys keep doing it oh we just you know, oh, we just we just got a good setup and um, everyone gets on good and we all get treated the same so yeah we all feel uh, welcome here and when we come no one's everyone's even so I think that's important and uh, we all get along good so yeah it's awesome well at least two more heats still to go your night's not finished so we'll let you get back to work sensational work guys thanks for talking to thank us thank you very much thank, Woo! You. thank you well we've still got a couple of races to go heat number 14 before we can pop those champagne corks the lineup for this one we have got to Josh Bates off gate number one he'll be disappointed with his performance no doubt about that Rob Bramford off gate number two he's uh, scored four points from his three what you would expect from Rob he's done certainly done his job over the two legs gate number three sees that Nathan Green has struggled badly as Nathan no points at all for him from his uh, four rides he'll be very bitter very very disappointed with his performance and uh, off of uh, gate number four we have got uh, Paul Stark, Starky with a fancy his chances of taking a victory here in uh, this one, no doubt about that. As uh, the riders just uh, said, of course, after all those celebrations on track, we've still got a couple of races to go. Heat number 14. It's underway, a little bit of a nibble there by Rob Bramford, but Dave Hodges has let it go. Paul Stark has been trying to get around the outside of Josh Bates, and he's managed to do so, and he's come around the outside of his teammate Rob Bramford as well to uh, take the lead. Stark it is, who's held in front from uh, Bramford in second place. Bates is in third, Nathan Greaves once again. He is at the back, it's been a torrid night for Nathan this evening. No points at all for him as uh, they come out of complete lap number two. 
Somerset Road got a 5 1 in heat number 10. They got a 5 1 and Max winning a championship winning 5 1 in heat 13. And it looks like they could be getting another one here in heat number 14. And full credit must be given to Sheffield who they did fantastically well to see off Newcastle in the quarterfinals of the playoffs. And then uh, that was a big upset. And then to, to uh, an even bigger upset was to see off Glasgow. An absolute thriller over two legs going through by 91 points to 89 on aggregate. But uh, tonight was just, uh, or these two legs of the final, was just uh, a couple of matches too far for Sheffield. As uh, with the uh, Casey's Rebels get a 5 1 in heat, number 14, Paul Stark coming around the outside to join it, his uh, teammate uh, to uh, set up another 5 1. Weedy celebration from Starkey. And uh, well, that's uh, sees uh, Somerset move 50 points to 34 up on the night, 96 to 78 on aggregate. And uh, uh, Paul coming around on a lap of honour. And uh, so is uh, Rob Bramford. He's done well now as Rob has paid seven. Good return from the Somerset guests, one of the two Somerset guests here this evening. He's happy and so he should be. So is uh, Paul Stark. And Paul, well, he may just get an extra outing in uh, heat number 15. Don't know if Gary May will pick in the uh, final race but uh, many congratulations there for Rob from uh, Charles and Josh after heat number 14 so here we go then the uh, last action of uh, 2016 at the Oak Tree Arena we've seen some uh, quite brilliant speedway racing once again here as we do each and every season it is a pleasure to film here, absolutely magnificent at speedway racing. If all racing, if uh, all tracks produce racing like this, uh, where you think the terraces would be packed each and every week, but uh, certainly that's not the case. But they are packed here tonight for the uh, those witnessing that Somerset uh, taking the uh, title. We've got the riders out for the final race, and it is these uh, Ricky Wells off gate number one. He's done well tonight, nine points from his four rides. Rowan Tungate, when he comes out of gate number two, just got his only point in heat number one, that was to Ricky. Out for the gate number three is Stuart Robson, he had a couple of victories tonight, and Paul Stark, when he won his last ride, so he gets an extra outing here in uh, heat number 15. So, uh, see what happens in the uh, final track action of 2016 then. Bates fly up and out of the start was a fast start there by the rider who not watching inside that is Ricky Wells, he leads the way. Paul Stark coming around the outside of Robson, he's got his second and first of speed. What a piece of speed that was from Paul Stark. He's got through into the first place. That was a breathtaking from Stark. He, he leads the way. Wells is in second. Robson is in third. Tungate is menacing it behind uh, Robbo as they come around the, the uh, to uh, complete that number two. Here comes Tungate, he's making a move on the outside of uh, Stuart Robson. He's got through in the third place. So it is a heat advantage for Somerset. It was one for Sheffield in the opening stages of this race. But Paul Stark, uh, he found a way past in the first place there to Ricky Wells. And uh, Rowan Tungate has got the better of Stuart Robson. It's, I don't think uh, Rowan has got enough time to find a way past uh, Ricky. But it's uh, going to finish in the 4-2 for uh, the outside. We're saying that. Here comes Tungate around the outside. Oh my goodness, well, that was a very, very close finish to that one. But, uh, well, Ricky Wells just about held on, held on. That was close. But uh, he got home uh, just by a very slim margin indeed. As uh, we take a look at some of the great action in this one. Heat number 15. And uh, Rowan Tungate, well, he almost did catch... Uh, Ricky on the on the running uh, to the uh, finish here of the race, but uh, he just uh, held on did Wells to uh, claim uh, second place. But nonetheless, it is a 4-2 uh, in uh, heat uh, number 15 to the home side, and they run out victors on the night by 54 points to uh, 36, and uh, by 100 points to 80 on Agut. They just uh, finished off very strong in those last three races. It's uh, a lot closer than the final scoreline suggests. As uh, the riders, uh, well, they're just uh, being congratulated there. Rowan Tungate, cracking race to finish with. Paul Stark getting the victory, though. He finished off with a couple of wins uh, here this evening. 
and uh, he's just being congratulated by the uh, rest of the team and next up of course will be the uh, presentations of the parade of the winning team and uh, then it will be the uh, presentation of that magnificent trophy the Premier League Championship let's go and join Tony for all of that And here are the victorious Somerset Coaches Rebels, the 2016 Premier League champions. Well, you've finally done it. We yeah. knew it would be close, and it certainly was, but yeah. at the end of the day, the boys have done it once again for you. They've pulled it out of the bag when it mattered most. Yeah, they're, they're an awesome team. We, we, we know we struggled to start with, but then I, I knew they would come good. They always do it at the end, and they wanted it, and it was an awesome finish. And I knew they would just do it. I knew. I wasn't really worried, really. You know what I mean? Because, but Chef will give us a run for the money. You know what I mean? They were a good side. They kept it close. But in the end, I, I knew I had the end. You know, with Ross, uh, with Josh and Rowan. You know, tremendous team. Tremendous team. Yeah. So important, not just for the riders, not just for the fans, the Hancock family as well. All the hard work that goes into this club over the course of a season. It's all worth it tonight, isn't it? Oh, sure is. All what you, this is what you want, isn't it? To win the title. We've won the League Cup as well, we won, we won the Pairs, um, we won the Shield, you know, the Premier Shield this year, so we won four trophies and this is what all that hard work's all about, you know what I mean, and it's really going to be fantastic, you know what I mean, It'll probably be a fantastic night to finish as well. Not many people gave this, uh, this Somerset Casey side much of a chance at the beginning of the season, but you had faith in them right from the start, didn't you? Yeah, I, I do a lot of own work, you know, check riders out, keep watching them and everything, you know, and look at DVDs and everything. And I knew Jay Cannon could get round here. I knew Bradders was good from Eastbourne and that. And, you know, righty and all that. And Rowan, you know, and, you know, a lot of people said to me about signing Rowan, but Rowan got 29 points round here from two league matches and he won the pairs. So he can get round here. And, and coming away from it, so it's just giving him that confidence he needed, do you know what I mean? And them two together are awesome, do you know what I mean? Is that, is that homework the key to your success? Because Charles has just said you're by far and away the best manager in the league. Oh, they are. He probably wants to get a team spot for next year then, doesn't he? <laughs> well, we hope he gets one. Cheers. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, yeah. The Championship Trophy for 2016. The Premier League champions, the Somerset Casey's Rebels. Fireworks lighting up the Somerset sky. All the effort, the hard work of the past few months finally pays off. The Premier League champions for 2016. Not sure we've got much room to get many more people in, but uh, I'm sure Debbie will try her best. And a big smile from each and every member of this Somerset Casey's Rebels side both on track and off, each equally important. And now the backroom staff take their leave and it's left to the riders to spray the champagne. Rowan Tungate getting a good gulp of that down his throat and down the back of his neck. <laughs> 